Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today we're going to be doing a tool unboxing video for a tool I have been waiting for for a very long time and I am so excited to share this with you. It is a new Festool Domino. Let's get going. So with Festool, it's pretty easy to go a mile deep on everything that's included with the tool. And in this video, I'm only gonna be focusing on the DF500 Domino itself. There are other accessories that come in the box, but I will do a video on those later, along with a video on dust collection, how to use it effectively, etc. This is really just looking at what do you find with the DF500 and how do you use it in a very basic sense. If you're looking to purchase a Domino, you're gonna notice that there are two different sizes. You've got the DF500, which is what I ordered and is their original tool. And you also have the DF700, which does extra large Dominoes. There's other differences between the tool, but that's pretty much the biggest difference. Another thing to note is that Festool does use distributors to sell all of their tools. They don't sell direct to my knowledge. And the reason you can get it through Amazon is because some of these distributors just sell it through Amazon. So opening the box, as you've seen, there's a variety of papers that come off the top from payment options to warranty options to what's coming from the distributor itself, but most importantly is the manual. We're gonna dig into this a little bit later. Next up is Festool service and warranty information. I don't generally do a lot with these when I've got my other tools, but given how expensive the Festool is and how good I've heard Festool service is, I'm gonna go ahead and register my Domino with them. So with all the papers out of the way, let's go ahead and start looking at the hardware that is in the box. So first up, we have a couple of spare parts. These are spring-loaded tabs that sit on the front of the Festool. If I'm being totally honest, I don't know exactly what they're for because I don't think it stops you from operating without them in there, but they're spares just in case. Next up is a power cord, which is pretty self-explanatory. A trim stop used for aligning very narrow pieces of trim. A support bracket to attach to the bottom when working with very thin pieces. Indexing pins to add to the domino when making repeated cuts. And last but not least, the DF500 itself. Per my usual recommendation, read through the entire manual before you start really working with the tool. And in this case, I have to say that Festool did a really good job with their manual. They have not only a parts diagram, every part is numbered, all the directions are really clear, it's properly referenced throughout the entirety of the manual, and they also have an entire section on how to use the tool effectively. For the purposes of this setup, I am going to be following the manual verbatim. So if you have any questions, you can also refer back to the manual and it should be following the exact same steps. It shouldn't be the case if this is the first time that we're removing it from the box, but if you're setting this up, make sure that everything is unplugged so that it can't turn on while you're taking things apart. Next, we need to inspect the included five millimeter bit to make sure that it wasn't damaged during shipping. You can do this by just pulling back on the front fence. Next, we need to make sure that the bit was properly installed at the factory to make sure that it's not loose before we start using it. So we're gonna do this by taking it apart. The one part that I did not find on my initial unboxing that I had to search around the box a little bit for, it was a little eight millimeter wrench. I found it right in the front, and this is what we're gonna to use to take it apart and to tighten the bits down. To take it apart, there is a small latch on the top on the right that you can put the wrench underneath, and then it's spring-loaded so that as soon as you lift up on it, it pulls apart. One of the rails is a little bit longer than the other, so you can pull it off the one on the left, rotate it around, pull it off the one on the right, and then the main body separates from the fence. With this now separated, we're gonna push on the spindle lock, which is on the left side when it's upside down, right side if it's right side up, and then we're gonna put the eight millimeter wrench on the bit and make sure that it's plenty tight all the way around. I actually also decided to take mine off so that I could see how these mount, and it's actually a pretty nifty system where they just thread on. I haven't seen another system like this. Most of the ones that I'm familiar with use collets, but this one threads on and just tightens in place. But this is also why you can't use traditional router bits with a Festool Domino. With the bit back in place, we can put everything back together. Uh, I did note when I was trying to put this back together that the rail tolerances were pretty tight, so you have to get everything aligned pretty well before it slides together. Once you push it all the way in, you'll hear that small click going back under that spring-loaded mechanism so that it stays on the rails. Next is one of the more satisfying steps of any tool unboxing, and that is removing the protective film from the bottom of the tool. Alrighty, next up is setting the fence angle. So one of the cool parts about the domino is that you can do your dominoes at different angles. On the left-hand side, there is a lever that you can loosen with a quarter turn, and then there's a couple of different snapping positions that it will go into place. 90 degrees is where I will use mine most often, but you also have positive stops at 22 and a half degrees, 45 degrees, 67 and a half degrees, and you can do it at any other angle. You just have to to manually align it. Next we're going to be setting the fence depth and there's two different ways that you can measure this. The first way is going to be this thickness gauge on the left in black. Now again because this is German all of these measurements are in millimeters so if you've got one inch stock you're going to want to push it to 25 millimeters. By setting this to the thickness of your stock you're going to be placing your domino in the exact center of that thickness. So for 20 millimeters it will be placed 10 millimeters down from the surface. In order to change this you need to loosen the fence's height adjustment which is the knob on the right. 
take it a quarter turn counterclockwise, and then pull up on the fence to lift it up on the rails. Once clear of the positive stop on the bottom, you can slide it forward and backward until you reach the position that you want. With your thickness set to the desired amount, you can move the fence back down until it hits on this positive stop, and then tighten the knob on the right to lock it in place. An alternative way to make this adjustment is with a regular depth gauge. If you look on the back side of the fence, you'll see a little ruler that's been pasted on there, and it has different measurements. This will be the distance from the bottom of the fence to the center of the bit, not cutting it in half. So if you set it to 25 millimeters, it will be 25 millimeters between the center of the bit and your fence. Next, I wanna show you where the mortise width adjustment is, though we're not gonna use it until we turn the domino on because you're not supposed to change this without the domino running. But the knob for that lives right here on top and there's three different settings. On the left, you've got the tightest one at 13 millimeters, followed by 19 millimeters and 23 millimeters on the right. Basically, this just adjusts how tight your mortise is around the floating tenon that you will be inserting. I'll have a deeper demonstration of this later in the video. Next is the mortise depth adjustment, which you can find on the left-hand side. You'll notice that the green knob can't be moved unless you press down on the lever just in front of it. And you can go between the different lengths of 12, 15, 20, 25, and 28 millimeters long. These are all standard half lengths of the OEM tenons that Festool sells. In this case, I'm using five by 30 dominoes, which if you're using OEM dominoes from Festool, they stamp that onto the dominoes themselves. It's kind of hard to see here, but you can very vaguely see it impressed in on the domino. Five by 30. With that, I make the very quick adjustment to bring it up to 15 so that I am splitting that domino halfway on either side of my workpiece. Well, that's it for setup. Let's go ahead and get this thing operating so that we can do a couple of test cuts on it. The first thing that we're going to need to do is plug it in. And you notice on the back side that the plug is keyed so that you can only insert it in one direction. You can see on the plug right here that it matches. Once you stick this in place, they also have a locking mechanism so that you can't unplug your tool while you're using it. Just give it a quick quarter turn clockwise and then tug on it to make sure that it's in place and you should be good to go. The on off power button is pretty cool. So it's spring loaded. So you have to push forward until it clicks into place. And then when you barely tap on the back side of it, it'll spring itself back into the off position. I like this because it is much more difficult to turn it on than it is to turn it off. So I have no doubts that it will not accidentally turn on at some point. Next, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that it is turned off after all of those switches on and off in a dry test of the power button. And then we wanna go ahead and grab our safety glasses because you should always be wearing safety glasses when you're using power tools in the shop. Next is a quick on then quick off test to make sure that everything is operating fine and it doesn't want to explode. Looks like we're just fine in that category. So I wanted to give you guys a quick view of what it looks like when this tool is actually operating because it's a little bit of a unique mechanism and it was kind of cool when I first saw it. So fundamentally the domino is a router. It's just that they're rotating the bit back and forth so that it can actually create the mortise. While oscillating back and forth, it slowly plunges into the workpiece so that it can cut to the depth of the mortise. Here's another view from the top where you can see it oscillating back and forth. Alrighty, now we're really ready to test this out. So I wanna use this in a butt joint like you see here, but then also a face joint for alignment purposes. I'd like to see how well it works in both of these pretty basic cases. Also, as a caveat before I get started, this is literally the first time that I have ever used this tool, so I am following the directions that are in the manual. I am sure I will learn more tips and tricks as I use this more for production and more for furniture making, and I will have a video that comes out in the future going over all the different things that I've learned in using it, but this is the most basic operation. If I'm making a mistake, I apologize. I was trying to follow the manual as best I could. So the stock that I have here is two inches square and I wanna make sure that the domino is centered all the way around, which means that I need to mark my top at one inch in so that I can align my domino with the center of that hole and then also set the fence, which I've done previously, to one inch deep. With that first marking in place, I'm going to transfer that directly over to the mating piece so that they are aligned with each other. If I wanted to be more precise than this, I would use a marking knife rather than a pencil because my pencil line was pretty fat. Next up for the face pieces, I don't actually care where they are placed, so I just wanna make sure that I transfer a line between the two of them consistently at two different locations. After clamping everything down and hooking up my dust collection, I went ahead and lined the center of this ruler on the top of the domino with that line that I marked earlier, made sure that both of my faces were sitting flush and square, and then turned it on and slowly actuated it into the sample. Overall, it was very smooth and very easy. I didn't feel like I had to force it at all. Here's another view more from the operator's perspective. It is really easy to see that ruler so that you can align your mark with the center of the domino. 
Here's another view from the side. You can see me getting both of those faces seated flush. I did notice when I was using it that the tool did not try and pull away from these two faces. It was very secure the entire time and didn't feel like it was fighting me at all. Alrighty, and then to see the whole process put together, here are the last couple of mortises going in. I have the mortise width setting on the nominal width, so it should be 13 millimeters wide, which is exactly the width of the dominoes. And I found, as I was trying to insert them, that it was a snug, but not impossibly tight fit. Very impressed. This was actually difficult for me to get in most of my day-to-day -day joinery. Once inserting it into the end grain of this other piece, it was a little bit looser than I expected it to be, but I think that's a factor of it being the end grain, not the face grain, or operator error. That's a very real possibility at this point as well. Another option for this end grain, which I think I would do next time, is two 5mm dominoes set at a quarter of the width as opposed to one domino at a half, or do a single larger domino, the 10mm domino per se. But overall, everything aligned very nicely, and it would be easy to have these aligned as I was clamping things together and gluing them. The face joint that I tested, I did the same thing by inserting two dominoes into one side and then aligning it with the other side and bringing them together. I was really, really impressed with how tight the tolerances were on the surface. I couldn't even feel the seam and hardly see the seam at all between these two pieces. Also, to give you an idea how tight these dominoes were inside, I had to use a pair of pliers to pull them out. Okay, I also wanted to show physically what the different mortise widths look like from the 13 millimeter nominal to 19 millimeters to 23 millimeters. Now, the reason why you might want to use these larger mortise widths is for the center of a face. I used nominal width on both of my face joint mortises, but nominally you only want to do that on one or two of them close to the ends, and any of the ones that are in the center of the face, if you've got a big long face, are going to be the wider ones so that you have a little bit looser tolerances when you're trying to get things together. Because again, the primary purpose of these dominoes on a long laminating face is not necessarily to hold everything together, but to align that top surface which I found on mine, it did beautifully. So I wanna go back to the manual or fast and again, tell you guys how awesome this manual is. I highly recommend if you get this tool that you read through it because they've got tons of good illustrations and diagrams and directions for everything. And it's just awesome. They even include the separate booklet that has all of these detailed pictures that they reference throughout the course of it, but they're full color. They've got a whole bunch of detail. It's really great. I didn't talk about the full package that I purchased here at the very beginning, but I do want to talk about it just a little bit. One of the things that I purchased on top of this was the uh, 498899 Assorted Domino Beach Tenons and Cutters in a T-Lock Sustainer. If you buy the same one and can't happen to find those cutters, look in the front right. I've heard a lot of people lose it there in the front right. But the reason I got this was because the dominoes themselves are not really the cheapest, but in this giant bulk pack and with a sustainer and with these cutters, which normally run about 50 bucks a piece, it was a phenomenal steal of a deal. Now for the question that is on everybody's mind, which is how much did this cost me? Because Festool is not known for being the cheapest on the market. So for the Festool Domino DF500Q set, the thing that you're seeing on the left that has all the different accessories, that was $10.99. Now for the Festool Assorted Domino Beach Tenons and Cutters, that was $365 bringing the grand total for the entire purchase to $1,464. Now, for almost $1,500, there are a lot of other tools that you can get around the shop. If you don't have a good table saw or a jointer, you can make some really good headway into getting some of these tools or a series of other tools. The reason I chose to get this in my shop rather than some other tools is that most of those other tools, I already have something that is functional in my shop and I'm doing a lot of joinery on some upcoming furniture and this is theoretically, and I hope, and I will report back to you guys, going to speed up my process quite a bit because joinery is always what takes me the longest. And so if I can use this to speed that up, I am hoping that I end up saving that in time. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I do get to every single one of those and love talking with you guys. And if you want to support the channel, thumbs up on the video, sharing the videos, subscribing to the channel, all of it helps. Thank you guys tons. Happy woodworking. Bye.